On our last episode, it was all about sightseeing. And our adventures took us to some of the coolest places both on and off the beaten path. However, now it was time to get back to the business of upgrading, where we'd be heading back to California, where a nice power bump was waiting for Big Green. It's nice to be back in California. It's wonderful to be back in California. I mean, I liked everywhere that we went, but I, I did miss the uh, sunshine and the blue skies. Well, there's something about just being home that's pretty amazing. It's true. Remember back when you were talking about one of the few things that you didn't like about Big Green was the fact that it uh, didn't have that much power? It could use a few more ponies, I think. Well, I have actually have a great solution for you, and it just happens to be right here. This is Airflow Research, or AFR. Ooh. It's time to talk cylinder heads. It's my favorite conversation. That's it, man. We'll wake this sucker up. Hi, you must be Tim. Yes, nice to meet you. Good to see you again, Mike. Good to How see you. you. So Mike promised me a How It's Made tour of cylinder heads, which I am very excited about. We got a lot of things hiding in the back that I'd love to show you. All right, cool. But before we get in, I just want to ask you, when did AFR start? So we started back in 1970 okay. uh, with Warren Brownfield and Ken Sperling. Yeah. Both were heavily involved in racing. Mm -hmm. Warren Brownfield was a consultant for Edelbrock. Okay. Ken, of course, was just, uh, I need to go fast in anything I got. <laughs> and he was basically the lead porter designer. Right. Uh, and then two of them started the business. About 10 years later, Ken bought the uh, full share of the business from Warren Brownfield, and we've been manufacturing cylinder heads ever since. So I'm assuming all the noise we hear in the background, that's where the action happens? Yes, sir. All right, so we should probably take Yeah, let's go to there. Around. All right, let's go. Where the action happens, because that's exactly where we were, the manufacturing facility for Airflow Research. Now, the process by which heads are made, however, isn't that simple. Or is it? What we learned is that there are seven specific steps that heads go through before they're ready to be shipped out. And while there are in fact more complicated than we're going to describe, the following will give you an idea of what must happen before you go ahead and slap a set of heads atop that short block of yours. Step one, the raw castings come from the foundry to AFR's manufacturing facility located in Southern California. Step two, the castings are then placed on a four axis CNC machine where all the flat surfaces are machined and holes for things like the spark plugs, head bolts, accessory bolt holes, amongst others, are then drilled and tapped into the still rough heads. Step three, once that's complete, the heads then head to a five axis CNC machine where the port work for the intake, exhaust runners, and the chambers are completed. Step four, the heads are then carted off to another room for a CNC valve job. Step five, a pressure check is then completed, which checks the integrity of the casting to make sure all ports are properly sealed and to ensure the heads perform as designed. Step six, from there, the heads go to a specialty washroom where they're cleaned and then readied for final assembly. Lastly, step seven. Once cleaned, the heads then go to an AFR technician where they are assembled completely by hand to the customer's order specifications. Then, once that's done, they are properly boxed and readied for shipping. This was crazy. To see how a head goes from kind of a raw casting to a fully finished head. It's sort of like seeing jewelry get made. A little bit, yeah. We get that a lot. Yeah, I'd imagine you would. I want to know exactly what we're going to be eventually putting on Big Green. So these are a set of your aluminum heads. We've got a camshaft, we've got rockers, timing chain, lifters, push rods. Let's start from the beginning. What do heads do? Heads are basically the lungs of your motor. They allow that motor to breathe. The more air you can take in, the more power you can produce, the more work you can do. What is the benefit of an aluminum head versus a cast iron head? Aluminum is a lot lighter. It's gonna dissipate heat a lot better. It's okay. gonna be more resilient against detonation and bad tanks of fuel. It also allows you to get a little more aggressive with the timing. 
If we install these heads on Big Green, what is the general outcome when you install heads in the cam and whatnot? Typically, you're gonna get better power and more efficiency okay. because you're getting a more complete combustion in the engine. So how do you go about saying, okay, well, this is the vehicle you have. These are the heads in the cam combination we should put into that. So basically, it all comes down to math. Okay. For a particular engine size or RPM range, there's a certain amount of airflow that engine's gonna require to perform at a certain level. On our, I'm gonna say relatively tired 350, right? Um, once we do heads, once we do the cam, what type of power increase would you generally see? I wouldn't be surprised if you were to pick up anywhere from say 60 to 100 horsepower, just depending on how well the components are picked out yeah. and they're working together. That's a, that's a pretty good boost of power on these things. Yes, sir. If you wanted to do further upgrades, the heads are still adaptable to that. Correct. But like this isn't all you need, right? There's other right. stuff that goes into <laughs> like doing heads in a cam. And then there's a lot of stuff that needs to be pulled from a motor when you're doing this. It's not just like a straight like, hey, let's just drop it on and it works, right? Correct. So once you get your heads ordered up, there's a few things that you're going to need before you can begin the installation. Number one, you're going to need gaskets. So your head gasket, intake and exhaust manifold gaskets. Okay. From there, you're gonna need a set of uh, adjustable push rods, uh, making sure that the geometry is proper okay. uh, on the cylinder head. In addition to that, you're also gonna probably want a new set of lifters as well as a good set of roller rockers, which reduces the friction and also helps with minimizing wear on the actual cam loads as it's riding over that pattern. Now, while we have the motor apart, it's also a good time to go ahead and replace the timing chain and gear. As you accrue mileage on the engine, that chain is gonna stretch. Okay. And with that stretch, you're gonna have variances in the timing. Is that something that's gonna wear out just as the motor kind of churns and burns over time? It is a wear item. The amount of stretch will be dependent upon the mileage and how hard it's used. Just go ahead and replace it as insurance? Yes, definitely. All right, well, uh, we're excited to get all this stuff installed on Big Green. So Tim, thank you for coming on and answering a bunch of questions. Thank I you, Mike. It. Alana! Yes, sir. We got go fast goodies for Big Green. I have just enough room for those. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, Tim, we have one final thing to do, and that is for you to slap that AFR sticker on the side of Big Green. I have to grab a sticker. Where's your sticker? I gotta go oh, you gotta get a sticker, man. Oh, I know, hot. I know. Oh, Are you still, hot oh, we're still filming, huh? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Let me go get one inside. <laughs> Ow! Oh. That's bruised. Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's hot. Whew. Oh, turn on that air conditioning. Yeah. Now that Tim had bestowed us with the proper AFR heads and hardware, it was time for yet another short trip, whereby we'd hand Big Green over to my friend and master automotive tech, Jeff Westhaver, so he could tear down the top of the engine and get Big Green ready for the install. It's an exciting day today, Tim. Do you know why? We're uh, installing some parts, right? Yeah, and it looks like the guys have actually done quite a bit without us. Hey guys, you're on the wrong side of the truck. You know that, right? We were thinking of doing like a Hemi under glass thing and doing <laughs> the engine in the back. Hi. Hey. Wanted to introduce you guys to my buddy Jeff Westaver. Jeff is responsible for taking care of all the stuff that I break. You must be a very busy man. Very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says that under his breath. So, dude, the entire top of the motor is obviously gone. How long did it take you to get down to this point? About two and a half days for a 40 year old truck. Everything looked pretty solid. All right, so what's the first thing we're doing? Cam and lifters. Oh, okay. Well, where are they? Back of the truck, I believe. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Okay, let's go back and get them. <laughs> <laughs> Field trip. Jesus, these look gnarly. This is all the junk that came off the motor. Like you would never, ever resurface that again. It's just not gonna happen. So did you have to drill something out? Because I don't know if you guys can see it, but look how nasty those studs are. Look how deteriorated they are. I did drill that out because I did think about trying to repair those manifolds for about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got cam. What else do we need? The lifters. Got them. Timing set. Got it. And cam install lube. All right, well, that's right there. All right, let's go to the front. Let's get this rolling. All right, man. Here's our shiny new cam. Um, is there anything we got to do to this thing before it goes into the motor? Uh, the first thing is to coat this thing with lube, okay. and we got to get the lifters soaking in oil, and we start putting it together. All right, so this doesn't take all day, and through the 
powers of editing, we're gonna montage the hell out of this. So after taking stock of everything we had on site, we readied the parts for the install. But something to consider if you're undertaking a swap like this is that you should realize ahead of time that many of the existing parts on the engine, especially if it's an older vehicle, may present you with problems if you try to reuse them due to pre-existing wear. Anticipating this in advance, along with any other parts that may need replacing though while you're under the hood, will save you both time and headaches when final install time comes around. Trust us on this. So over the last few days, Jeff has gone to town on this thing. And over the last two days, we've gone through the reassembly process. So right now we're just back to installing accessories. So by tomorrow, we should be ready to fire this sucker up. I've never seen a three blade fan before. I haven't either. It looks like a propeller. You gotta keep that. So we've been working on the car for a couple of days. I like to say we, although it's really just Jeff. Um, Mike and I run errands, mostly Mike runs errands. You know, when you're doing this kind of project, people talk about like, well, how much time does it take to wrench or whatever? And yeah, I mean, that's relevant, but really you need to know how far away is the parts store? How far away is the plan B parts store? Also, how far away is the plan C parts store? Because you're gonna need at least three parts stores and probably like six runs, right? Six runs, that's the standard. Don't fight it. You're just gonna waste time by fighting it. Just go to the parts store and then go to the other parts store. And finally, you'll have all the parts you need and then you can have Jeff put them on. Having fun, Jeff? I am. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you remember when Jeff was talking about how many trips to the auto parts store per day at a minimum? He said six. This is trip number six. It's 12.34. It's trip number six already. Not this should be this. the last one. We know that six is not going to be the appropriate number. I'm going to bet that probably nine is going to be the appropriate number. This is what happens when you got an old car. Every time you go into it, you're fixing stuff. Okay. Radiator block off plug, uh, hose clamp, one screw. Son of a bitch, it just fell right down between the seats. So does this have all the zinc in it? That's gonna have a high zinc content, but I wanna get that STP stuff. Should we have bought that bottle of zinc additive? Yeah. And we didn't do that? No, I just not thought of it. Should I feel bad? No. Yeah, let's get that done. We're going to the auto parts store one more time. I think this is trip number eight, right? And should be the last. Should be the last. It's also bad when you walk in, they're like, hey, Mike, you're back again. And then they giggle. Oh, and now, of course, I forgot something in the car. Almost. Good. I'm gonna count on you to follow the screen settings. I want to be out there. I want to watch for coolant okay. leaks. If we've got, if we, if we have a coolant leak or something unexpected, I'm yeah. gonna let you know, and we're just gonna have to shut down. Jeff is literally one of the best techs I've ever met. So I'm not worried. It's just my own internal anticipation, just because I'm super excited to see the difference in power and performance of this thing. that always scares the hell out of me. It's just one of those things where you're like, what's gonna happen? But look, I'm gonna just cycle it up and down. Or, yep. You almost don't want to say anything. So far, so good. Can I have the, just the filter on it? Mm -hmm. It's the mating call of the asshole. That is. So what just happened, Mike? 
Somebody just a little burnout. With the, the, the suburban. Oh, we just forgot to hook up the vacuum hose, so didn't have any brakes. We got brakes now? Yes, we do. Cool. That sounds awesome. A thousand times. Like, doesn't that sound great? It does sound good. I like the fact that it it sounds like a little more aggressive, but it's not it's not like too loud, you know? Like it's still like just kind of a chill road trip truck. Remember when you were a kid and you got a new pair of sneakers and you're like, I can run so fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel like it's got right. I'm like, I just got my new sneakers. The thing that I was really impressed about and the thing that I was worried about was like restarting after we'd taken everything off. You oh know? my like, God. Because we like, you know, it wasn't like we had the Edelbrock techs here to like walk us through it all again. And it, it was so easy. This is one of those things when it comes together, it's just like, oh, this is the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna pull over right up here. You wanna drive? Yeah. Okay. Oh God. Still gotta deal with it. Still gotta deal with the suspension. <laughs> that's, that's something that's, we're not there yet. Okay. You guys got more leg room? Oh yeah. Everybody likes I, sitting it behind me. looks like me. you've done that a couple of times. Just a few dozen. So Jeff, what are your impressions so far? It's got that just right idle, like, uh, you know, I'll sit in traffic for you, but I got something for you. <laughs> Still a big truck, my friend. It's, it is, but it sounds good. Every time we drive past like a reflection, Oh, you like looking at yourself? I, I like looking at the truck. It's just bad. No, I don't even want to see my own face, but the truck I want to <laughs> see. The truck is cool as hell. This worked out great. Wow. Jeff, Tim, thank you guys so much. Thank you for everything. This is awesome. Whoever buys this thing is going to love this truck. Yeah, they got a good truck. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in next episode when Big Green gets a little interior love at Classic Industries. If you like what you see, please hit that big red button below and subscribe and thank you for watching.